DataDesk lets us build and explore regression models in a particularly powerful way. Here we have data on countries of the world. We can open up our variable that shows countries. Here are the names of the countries. I have it small just to keep it out of the way down here. Um, let's look at predictors of female life expectancy. Here are our variables as icons on the desktop and female life expectancy is here. I click on the first one to indicate that it's a Y variable. I'll click on the others that I'm going to include. I'll just select them this way. Uh, select out to here. And let's start by making correlations. So here are Pearson product moment correlations. Datadesk is very fast and it computes those correlations. I'm going to move the window down here out of the way. Now we're interested in variables that are highly correlated with female life expectancy. Uh, birth rate is the highest correlated. Female literacy is very highly correlated. Male literacy is also correlated and household income has a reasonably high but negative correlation. Uh, with life expectancy, which is sort of interesting. Let's look at the highest one, the birth rate. If I click on this correlation, Datadesk pops, down, pops open a menu that offers a scatter plot. We're thinking of birth rate as being, as a uh, life expectancy rather, as being caused by birth rate or being due to birth rate. So let's make a scatter plot of female life expectancy versus birth rate. Uh, here's our scatter plot, and sure enough, there's a very strong relationship here. So uh, Based on looking at the scatter plot and seeing that things look to be linear and uh, good to fit with the regression, we will click on the hyperview menu there and ask for a regression of female life expectancy versus birth rate. There is our regression analysis, and sure enough, uh, the T ratio is highly significant. The R squared is 66.9%. Uh, it's a pretty good regression. Now the question is, what other variables might we add to this regression to build a multiple regression, and how would we find them? Uh, one way to do this in some programs would be to let the program do it automatically. Uh, data mining programs sometimes do this automatically. Datadesk lets us do it with our own participation so we can see what's going on. Uh, the secret here is that when we have made a multiple regression, we've done the best we can to uh, account for the variability in female life expectancy from birth rate. Uh, and we wonder if other variables could account for the remaining variability, the, the part that has not been accounted for, 66.9% and .9 of the variability has been accounted for, but there, there is more there, we know. There is uh, a more variability there. So what we're going to do first is to compute the residuals. Um, so these are the residuals from this regression. That's the part that was not fit by the regression. Here are the residuals down here. We don't even need to look at them. All we need to do is to drag them into the correlation table. They're immediately added to the table. The table is updated. And across this bottom row now, we can see which of these other available predictors is highly correlated with the residuals. And looking along here, the one that is most highly correlated is the inflation rate. Right here has a negative correlation, minus 1. One. We click on that and we're offered a scatter plot of the residuals versus the inflation rate, uh, which we can look at. And it's not obviously linear. There's probably some trend here, something going on down here that might be a little troublesome, but nothing too troublesome there. So we might want to add the inflation rate to the regression. Now, one of the things we should always do when we have a regression is to look at the residuals. We'll scatter plot the residuals versus the predicted values right here because we're going to want to watch to see what might change in this plot as we work with this regression. So now I have to take the inflation rate. Now where did it go? I can find it because I can just ask DataDesk to locate it for me. There it is. And I can drag it into the regression. And you can see the table highlights, the regression table highlights to acknowledge the drag. As soon as I let go of the mouse, the regression is recomputed literally that fast. Uh, and it is also highly significant. It looks like a good addition. Our R squared is now up to 67.8%, so things have improved. And of course, now that we've modified the regression, the residuals have changed, so we could plot update the scatter plot to see how the residuals versus predicted values plot has changed. But also, we know that the residuals variable, which is here, has changed, so the correlation table also offers to change. That's what this red exclamation point says, so we can update that. And now, these are the new correlations with these new residuals. Now, looking at these, we can see that um, 
household income is the most highly correlated uh, remaining predictor. Uh, we can make a scatter plot of residuals versus household income. And again, there's going to be some trend down this way. We can see that's why it's uh, a negative relationship. And uh, if we like that, we can add household income to the regression. Again, as soon as I release the mouse, it recomputes instantly. Uh, this one is not quite as significant. It, the the p-value is only 0.1. Uh, we may or may not want to keep household income in the regression. We can update the, re the regression window and the, the residuals, rather, and see what that scatter plot looks like. Um, we might update the correlations again. We could also simply make a decision based on our knowledge. We don't have to only go with the highest correlation. So we might think that female life expectancy might be related to literacy. So we have both female literacy and male literacy. Uh, female literacy is actually the, the more unusual one in some countries of the world. So let's add female literacy to the model. That doesn't look like it fit very well. Um, we could remove household income and see if that would do better. And sure enough, when we do that, that improves the fit of female literacy a great deal. So it's exploring the model that we want to do here. We're trying out different things to see what might fit. We can, once again, look at how the residuals behave, uh, and we can update the, the correlations to see what else fits. And now we see there's really very little. We know that adding household income back in isn't going to work, and almost nothing else looks like it's worth anything. So now we need to look at the residuals themselves to see what's going on. And one of the things we can see here is there is a cluster of countries down here that seem to have pulled away from the main cluster of countries. As we built the model, they seem to have been moving farther and farther away. And we want to go in and identify them and see what's going on. This is Lesotho, South Africa, Nam Namibia, Swaziland, Zimbabwe, Central African Republic, Mozambique, Zimb uh, Zambia, Angola, and Liberia, all down along this trend down here. Now, this is the sort of thing that a software program by itself simply can't deal with because it doesn't have the knowledge. But a human looking at this could say, all of these countries together all have something in common. All of these countries are in Africa, and most of them are in southern Africa. And now that raises the question, what is it about countries in southern Africa that might have affected life expectancy and made it lower, these are low residuals, so life expectancy in these countries is lower than we would expect even after we allow for the birth rate, the inflation rate, and the literacy rate. Uh, it actually took me a while to think of this when I first saw these data, but if you think about it, one of the problems that exists in this part of the world is a very high rate of HIV AIDS, and we don't have any data on that in here, and that might be accounting for the particularly low uh, uh, life expectancy even after accounting for these other variables. That's the kind of insight that you can get from doing data exploration that you simply can't get from an automated program or a uh, data mining program that builds models like this automatically.